catches, puts up the three. Long go, rebound box. Now head over in this direction. On a three. For three, puts it in. Bridges. Oh my God! Oh, what? Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. Curry way down to bang, bang. All right, we're back, guys. Welcome back to Cam's Corner. Joining me today, a senior guard from Rhode Island College and the Little East second leading scorer currently, Keyshawn Jacobs. Keyshawn, I appreciate the time, man. How's it been? Everything going on now? Uh, it's been all right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, been a little tired lately. School starting back up and basketball and everything, but I've been all right, though. How no, for sure. Time? Yeah, same thing. You know, school is definitely like, uh, this is de- probably the hardest semester I've had so far, um, you know, kind of getting into my major and stuff like that. But I know as far as you, like being a student athlete, it's definitely harder. And like, uh, you know, we talked about earlier with your music career and stuff like that. Um, I know you said this is your first time being on a podcast. So I hopefully uh, I can, you know, make a good first impression, you know, ask some good questions, get to know you a little bit more. So I looked, um, I looked up you up a little bit. I know you're from uh, Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, what were like youth sports like up there? And uh, what kind of sports did you involve yourself with at a young age? Um, growing up, my whole family was really like football and basketball oriented. So like growing up there it was a little, a little competitive, but, um, when I was like what third grade, uh, I was playing on like the sixth grade travel team. Like my dad always put me up like maybe two, three grades to uh, just you know better myself as a player and everything like that. But um, yeah, it was really hard because I was so young playing against older people. But um, yeah, I think I started basketball though when I was like three. So I'm playing yeah. Basketball. So have you always played with like older kids like like your entire life? Always like, like yeah. Growing up from third, like from when I first started until basically college, really. Yeah, that's that definitely shaped your game and like even like the other sports that you play like just tremendously over those years. Like, did you develop uh, a love for basketball like before anything else, or was like was like uh, like football like probably like your favorite at one point? And then like, how did you develop that love for basketball? Um, honestly, they were probably equal. But when I was playing football back when like Pop Warner days, or when I lived in Georgia when I was like ten, nine, um, I broke a lot of bones. So, yeah. Like, I had broke my elbow like three times. I broke my my thumb, and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't know if football is a sport for me, so I like focused mainly on basketball. And I mean, I loved them both from jump, but I mean, I just put my focus mainly on basketball after like all the injuries and stuff. With football. Right. So like like you said, you know, like broken bones, stuff like that, going through hardships. Like during those times, and like during like your youth, uh, kind of like leading up maybe like to high school and stuff. Who was like a mentor to you uh, that you kind of looked up in a way like throughout your sports journey? Uh, definitely my dad. Yeah, he's taught me everything about basketball. He's always taught me to look at uh, different players and watching like different film on um, specific players that I want to like model my game after, things like that. But um, I would say definitely my dad. He was actually a good basketball player himself too. So yeah. So did he play uh, collegiate basketball too or no? Uh, he played for like a year, but then he ended up going to the military. So yeah. Oh wow. High school and things like that though. Yeah. So when you were growing up, I know you said your dad was a big role model for you. Uh, who did you kind of model your game like uh, basketball wise after? Uh, I was so short. So like I was always like a shooter. So really, yeah. like growing up, it started off with like Ray Allen and things like that. And mm-hmm. then it switched over a little bit to like Derrick Rose. because I liked how like fast he played and things like that. Yeah. And now I'm more of like a Steph Curry, Kyrie yep. fan. Think so. Yeah, definitely watching your game and like it's like you're like the curry of like you know around college. Like it, it's sick, like just watching you guys play. Like uh you guys have such a special team this year. Um, I know you mentioned Derek Rose, like I'm a big Knicks fan. I watched you know his style of play. Um, you know, it's obviously you could tell it like you know, you've watched these guys growing up, like you know, Ray Allen, great shooters just like that. So uh, but like fast forwarding like into like high school, uh you played at Beaver Country Day in Mass. Uh so explain to me like the level of competition you guys played. And, like, how it was uh, adjusting yourself to, like, the game after, like, middle school and, like, you know, being a freshman? Um, so, I would say I went, so I went to public school up until high school because Viva Country Day is a private school. Okay. Um, yep. I really didn't see myself playing back in my city because mm-hmm. I just felt like, honestly, like, it wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So, like, 
I ended up, you know, playing for like AAU teams and things like that. And um, one one time, my coach had like the Beaver Country Day head coach come to one of my games and had a good game or whatever. He talked to me, and then I went like a tour or whatever of the school. And when I went there, I found out that some of his, like my coach. Well, I didn't find out that after the tour, but like my head coach from my AAU team, some of his kids went there as well. So like they was telling me like how great the competition was, and like it'll be better. It'll be a better opportunity for me as far as basketball goes and education wise because it's obviously a great school as far as education goes as well right so once i figured all of that stuff out and i had like some friends that were already going to be there i realized that that would probably be the best fit for me so like you you took a tour like it was like uh almost like a college tour or something like that like they like kind of did they like kind of like recruit you for basketball or was it just like you wanted to go yeah he came to a couple of my AU games and then he told me like he wanted me to play at their school so then went on the tour like the tour and Wow. Did you look at any other schools or was that kind of like the first one that came to you and you just kind of went with it? Um, outside of like the lo- the more local, like St. Mary's and things like that, I don't look at too many schools for real, for real. But Beaver was one of the main options. Like it was either like public school or go to Beaver type, type of deal. So I was like, yeah, I'll just go to Beaver to see how it is. Right. So like looking more into uh, Beaver, like it was a uh, I. E-I-L, like, like that was, like, the type of league it was. Um, yes. Yeah, so you won you won the all-league MVP. So, like, explain to me, like, the types of, like, um, like the competition that you guys played and, like, uh, how it was. So did you go there, like, all four years of high school? Uh, I went there all four years. Um, yeah. The competition is, like, crazy, to be honest, because, like, like I said, the middle school and public school basketball and then private school basketball is just way different. No, yeah, like, of course. You're getting, like, a group of guys that, like, actually care for the game and like really like put their all into the game and like you're playing against really good competition like when I first got to the school my freshman year I think almost everyone in the starting five could have played like afterwards like everybody like they were all great the point guard shooting guard like from from point guard to center it was all great players like um yeah like the competition was great though it was really good competition I feel like like, yeah a lot so like uh like I mentioned, like you won the league MVP. Was that do you know what year that was? That was probably my senior year, my senior year or my junior year, one of those years. So how did you feel like when like you found out like you were gonna be the MVP of the whole league? Um, I mean I kinda had a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was having a good season, so I was mm-hmm. like, I think I deserve it. So once I found out that I got it, I was happy. I was extremely happy. So yeah. yeah, so like, like being the MVP, absolutely, you know, it comes with patent the stats, you know, playing tremendously, bring your team, uh, you know, to playoffs and stuff like that. Um, how did you, so like your first college, how did you hear about uh, Morehouse and like, um, how did like, were there like scouts there from Morehouse, like, you know, f- watching you throughout high school or like that, how did that come about to you? That story is crazy, to be honest. So throughout high school, like I want to say my first injury in high school was probably sophomore year mm-hmm. or junior year, but Oh, so you dealt with injury. You dealt with injury, like, in high school, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. So injuries, right? So I think, like, sophomore year, I, uh, I have played in the AU game. It was going into my junior year. Mm-hmm. I went up for a layup. Some kid pushed me, whatever. I dislocated my shoulder and sprained my AC joint. So my first practice, you know, my first game back from that, I did a Euro step, got tripped. I dislocated my other shoulder. Mind you, Jesus. at this point, I had um, George Mason, BU, um, Lehigh, uh, who else was there? Harvard, Dartmouth, like a local, like Ivy League schools. Yeah, like that. George. Yeah, George Mason's. Uh, they're in the A10, aren't they? Or no? But they're. I know they're D1. Yeah, so I had a couple of those schools like interested in me, and to be honest, like Dar- I know Dartmouth, Harvard, they wanted my GPA to be a little bit higher. I think it was. Yeah. Like a, I think I left high school with like a three one. They wanted it to be like a three three or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um. I had schools like that looking at, oh, yeah, Cornell's too. But, um, yeah, so once I got injured in that AAU game, they were gone. Like, I yeah. just I yeah. them again. So then I think it was my – we had, like, a, a a day of school where uh, – my senior year where it was, like, we told everybody where we were going to college or whatever, this, this, and that. And I didn't know yet. Hmm. So I ended up leaving. I left school. I applied to a bunch of schools. But I left high school. And without even knowing where I was going, really. And then I think, like, it was two or three months before Morehouse, like, classes and everything started. My friend was like, just come to Morehouse. They have a free tryout. Um, just come down, fly down with coach, and then, like, just try out for the team or whatever. So I went down there, and 
to be honest, we had like a three hour workout. And yeah. I, li- I think I missed two shots the whole workout. Like I was, I was just feeling like, I'm sorry, I believe I'm like, it too. <laughs> I believe it. I missed two shots the entire workout. And so like we were playing like five on fives, doing like drills and things like that. And so like at the end of it, um, they have like an all-star team. So like, obviously I, I made the all-star team or whatever. We played against the best high school in Georgia. And I yep. just saw so said or whatever. Mm-hmm. We're playing them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring these guys in for you guys to play. Da, da. We killed them by, like, 30. Like, yeah. it was bad. Like, we had – we killed them by, like, 30. And then right after the game was over, the coach pulled me – the assistant coach pulled me and the head coach pulled me up to the uh, half court and was like, oh, we want to offer you a scholarship, a partial scholarship, whatever, to come to Morehouse. So – after you leave here, go back to the school and get some paperwork done, whatever the case is. So then, got the paper. I was kind of considering it with my my family or whatever, and I really didn't have another option to go to. And, yeah. You know, so I ended up going to Morehouse and mm-hmm. played there for two and a half years or two years, something like that, and redshirted. But yeah, I played D two. It was it was good though. It was a good experience. Yeah. So how did you feel like you know once you were in the system? How did you feel about the, like the level of competition jumping from high school to Jeez. now at Morehouse? It was almost like the same adjustment as it was from middle school to high school. But mm-hmm. um, we actually had this, our point guard, he was tough. Like, yeah, that was the first, like, you know, in basketball, you don't ever want to admit to anyone being better than you. But, yeah, like, exactly. He's, right. He's the first person I've ever was just like, bro, everything about his game is just, I'm sorry, like he's better than mine. Like, mm. just a better player. And he ended up going to um, the NBA for a little bit too. He had like a 10-day contract with the Knicks. Went wow. To what was his name? Tyrus Walker. He was that man was I can't lie he was different. He Were was, you do you remember what year that was? Like he do you, went, when he uh, got the ten day? It probably was two years ago. No, I'm not. Yeah, probably like two years ago. Two years ago or three years ago. You said his last name was Walker. Um, Walker, yep. See, like me, like I told you I'm a, like a diehard Knicks fan. I always like I'm trying to think. Yeah. I don't know if I remember. He played, that. The, he played in the uh, the summer league and all of that. He had like 16 points a couple of games. So yeah. Was and they ended up letting him get, like, 10 days, and then he went back out. But Wow. So you, you've played against, like, pretty good competition so far, you know, leading up to that point. Mm-hmm. And we also played against, like, what, three, four Division One teams throughout the season. So, like, we played against, like, Georgia, Ole Miss, uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham. Um, wow. Georgia, Georgia Tech, things like that. So, like, it was, like, we had great – it was great competition. So they were, they were D2, right, like, from, like, where you were located? Yeah, Morehouse was D2, but, like, we played against, like – four or five D1 schools throughout the uh, season. Yeah. So looking at, like, the numbers, like, your freshman, sophomore year, like you said, you redshirted, you're only averaging, like, three and a half points a game, stuff like that. Um, how did you, like, make that transition over to Rick now? Like, how did you know, like, after your second year, you're like, all right, I got to make a change, like, something's got to happen? Because I know I got more left. Like, I know I can, you know, definitely give more to a team, you know, stuff like that. Um, To be honest, in college, I got injured a lot, too. So, yeah. like, my freshman year, I don't like telling this story, to be honest. But, like, my freshman year, there was a point where uh, the coach had put me in the starting lineup. So yeah. I was, ready, I was ready to go, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, practice before the first game that I was going to start, I got an elbow from the person <laughs> whose position I took. <laughs> I got an elbow in practice. I broke two orbital bones in my face. My eye got pushed back four millimeters. I had to get eye surgery, like, everything. And when, ever since then, like, the coach kind of, like, he knew my uh, high school like injuries and things like that, so he kind of thought I was like injury prone. So he didn't really trust me too too much playing coming back. Then I had like other injuries too, so it just like it just messed everything up for me. So then after that trust was kind of gone, I realized that I had to make that change, and that's why I came to Rick because Coach Glenn he was recruiting me since I was in like eighth grade, ninth grade, coming to oh, all, really? the, all the games that it could. Yeah, like so wow. I was kind of already comfortable with him. So once I told everybody that I was transferring from Morehouse to come back like locally, I um he was like one of the first people to call me. So I was like, okay, that, that's the right fit. He says I can play my game, shoot, you know what I'm saying, have a green light, whatever the case is. So I ended up coming here. Yeah, dude, injuries definitely injuries is definitely like, you know, from what you've been saying, it's just the tough breaks. Like, you know, you never know what could have happened if those injuries didn't happen. But um after making that transition to Rick, you know, junior year, average 20 points, had a season high, 33, you know, bunch of 20 point games and stuff like that. So um, how grateful were you that Coach Glenn, you know, took you under his wing and gave you the opportunity to like show everybody what else you got after injuries and all that stuff? 
extremely grateful. Me and my dad actually talk about this all the time, to be honest. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was stressed out when I was at Moore House. Like, I was just, I got in, like, a little funk. Like, I was kind of depressed in a way. Hmm. But, um, Once Glenn told me, like, he was going to let me do what I want to do, like, green light, whatever the case right. is, let me do my game. I was just like, thank God, because I was praying on it. I was literally praying on, like, an another opportunity. Like, I'm like, I work too hard to not play college basketball or something. Yeah. And, like, I actually get minutes and do things. So, I'm like, once he gave me that opportunity, I was crazy happy. Like, I was just extremely happy. And now I'm here still. So, my last year. So, yeah, it's dope. Do you, do you think you're going to um, uh, have, like, a graduate year, like a fifth year, or you're not sure yet? I've been in school for so long, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel you. I yeah. my, my goal right now, because I have, like, I kind of have another semester left, but just, like, an internship for a semester. Mm -hmm. But um, after that, probably the, next, the following year, I want to go play overseas somewhere. And, um, yeah, that's definitely a good route, for sure. So that's the goal for me right now. Yeah, definitely. So, like, going back to, uh, like, your junior year, like, how much did your confidence boost, like, after, like, you were in, like, the starting lineup and you actually got minutes and, like, you know, you were able to play like your type of basketball. Um, like the confidence was always there. I feel like mm -hmm. it was just kind of taken away at the same point. Like, but like once I already knew, like he was giving me the opportunity to play, Glenn was giving me the opportunity to play. It was back. Like the confidence was already back. Like I said, I put in too much work over the summers and over the years, like working out and things and working on my game. So like I already had the confidence. So once I played that first game, whatever the case was, the second game, whatever, I was I was ready for it. So. Yeah, so like how was uh how was it moving to like Rhode Island and how was it uh how was that transition for you as a student one and like as an athlete as well? Um, student wise, it's a little different. The school's a little different. Um like I think classes are honestly a little more difficult here mm -hmm. in Morehouse. But um it's not too bad. Like honestly, high school prepared me for college extremely because we had 10 pages 15 pages 20 pages like mm -hmm. I was knocking those out and I haven't really had anything like that anything crazy like that here but school-wise it's pretty it's pretty cool it's pretty calm like the school like there was a lot of celebrities that came and like it was like yeah, a like, well-known school Wednesday, Wednesday so it was um it's called the AUC like it's Morehouse Spelman College and then Clark Atlanta yep. and like Wednesday we would have like some, some celebrity come perform or whatever for like our, in our little like middle section of our campus Thursday, I believe, was at Clark Atlanta, and then Friday was at Spelman. So, like, it was just crazy. Like, there was a lot going on always, like, throughout the week. But, like, coming here, I don't really see too much of that at all. Like, honestly, yeah. um, the parties and things like that, it's not really as lit as it was out there. Like, No, but, yeah, definitely. Like um, School-wise, though, like I said, it's it's not that much. But basketball is really why, why I'm, like, here. Like, Yeah, for sure, like, definitely. You know, a lot more happy to be able to actually play basketball than to just be – out of school sitting there not wasting time on that for like so right no I definitely feel that because like for me like I, I commute so it's like I live right down the street I live in Johnston so like probably like five minutes away um no like you know really parties or anything like that and like I've been like yeah I know you've seen me at the games and stuff like announcing doing like PA and stuff um I've been thinking of like transferring uh to URI like for my junior year to do like broadcast and stuff like that so um not that I'm nervous but like I've never had a transition like that because I've always been home you know what I mean I never really moved anywhere so um I can only imagine like what what that was like for you you know going from Morehouse in Atlanta now all the way to Rhode Island so um but like kind of like on the Rhode Island like you know on that kind of pace like you're as far as your teammates like you guys have had such an amazing bond since your junior year um how well has that helped you like win games and uh just like bond with them in general like off the court um it's crazy because like I think our bond initially this year was better than it was my junior year. But our junior year, our bond was there. We did have some disagreements, obviously, like every team does. Mm -hmm. But um, that bond definitely helps, like, with chemistry on the court. Like, if you have, if you guys are seeing each other off the court, you know, chilling with your friends or whatever, off the court, like, it just translates over to the game, too, like, on the court. It's crazy. Like, definitely, you can, and then playing, just even playing more time with, like, play, uh, different players and stuff like that. Like, it kind of just, like, you know what guys' spots are, like they're high, you know what I'm saying, where their sweet spots are, or you know he's going to cut back door instead of come all the way to the top if I'm going to the wing, or it's like just knowing different things. Like, I think spending time with people and practicing a lot with people, like it builds that chemistry, like tremendously. So, yeah, well, what was it like, like the first couple of days of practice, your junior year, like when you first met them? Like, did you guys have a bond, like right away, or like? Um, not really. People were kind of like standoffish a little bit yeah. when I first got here. 
Because, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming in and then Glenn's telling me to shoot the ball from half court. So it's like, people kind of like, right, yeah. Look at that a little certain way. But then, like, as I kind of gained their confidence and their trust um, with my, my game or my shot or whatever the case is, like, they were kind of okay with it. But of course. Yeah, definitely. Like, it, it's, it's been helping you guys a tremendous amount. Of course, with Cheyenne, like, you guys have, like, almost like all the, you guys have like all the pieces of the puzzle with Jordan, uh, Oos, like, um, I actually played with uh, Oos in uh, high school because he went to Winsocket mm-hmm. in Rhode Island. Yeah, I played at Johnston. Um, they'd always come, like, the first game of the season always. They were Division One, We were Division Two. They would always come and play us at Johnston. So it was kind of cool. I don't know if he remembers that, but uh, that was pretty cool. But um, so as far as this year, right, explain to me how your mindset has been throughout this, the course of this, like, you know, this championship run. Like, you guys, this is, like, the year to win a championship. You guys have had the momentum. Like, explain to me what your mindset's been like throughout these games. Uh, the mindset is it's just like we want to we want to ring. Like, we honestly want to ring. Like I think our run prior to our the break that just happened, mm-hmm. like, we were all clicked in, locked in, and all that. Like but like that break kind of, you know, we're kind of make our way back and get back to where we were. And it's a little struggle right now. We took a couple of L's this uh, after the break, but um, our mentality is still the same. I feel like like I feel like we all want to win a championship. We all have to figure it out. We all have to come together. And find ways to you know make that happen. Like I said, we had a tough game last night actually against Keen. Yep. Um, I think it's just a part of the process. Like honestly, if we all lock in and we all commit to our plan, I think we'll be fine. Because we, like you said, we have the pieces, so we just have to put them together. Honestly. Yeah, for sure. And like, like you said, like the tough loss to Keen State. I think that's the only really like team that's really giving you guys trouble because you know obviously that overtime loss to Dartmouth, like. Like you guys could have easily won that game. Like just simple, like one little simple thing that could change like the entire game, like close losses and stuff like that. So you guys will definitely, you know, you guys will be all right throughout the rest of the course of the season. And I hope playoffs goes good as well. But um, there's one game in particular I want to talk to you about uh, when you guys played Curry, when you had 44 and you broke. Well, you t- you actually tied the record for threes. With, uh, you went 12 for 17 from beyond the arc. Like, um, so like, like, what is your mindset throughout a game like that? Like, how, what were you thinking, like, during it? And, like, how, how, do you, how were you feeling after it? Um, well, going into the game, I kind of already knew that I wanted uh, to get the record. Like, mm-hmm. I just started feeling something that day. I told myself, I was like, I think I'm going to get the record today. So I'm like, right before the game. So then when I found out the record was um, 11 threes or whatever, uh, I, had, I think I had six at halftime. Oh, so um, you did break it. I thought you tied it. So you did break it. Oh, you... no, I broke it, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I, think I had... Yeah, it was either 12 or 13, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, yeah. at halftime, I had half of the record, basically. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I got this. I know I can get it. Something like that. So I was like, second half, or maybe it was 10. At half? I don't know. I, something like that. No, it had to be like eight, something like I, I remember record, something like that. I think the record is 10, or it was 10 or something. I think I have two more than the record right now. So then, something yeah, it was 10 because you had, you had 12. You went 12 yeah. for 17, yeah. Five at half time. So I'm like, oh, I can get five second half too. Like, mm-hmm. whatever. So then I understand. I come out, whatever. I'm like, okay, move the ball around a little bit. All right. I'm like, nah, let me start shooting. Mm-hmm. Hit a couple. I'm like, okay, I'm right there. Hit, hit like two more. I'm like, oh, I'm one away. Hit it. And I thought I was behind though. Yeah. I, mean, I had it, but I was like, no, no, no. I think I need like one or two more. So he kept me in a little longer. And I hit two more, I think. Or one more to uh, get 12. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm done. I'm good now. I thought I was going to be able to get 50 because there was still eight minutes left in the game. Yeah. I had 44 or whatever. I was going to let me get 50, but I was like, ah, whatever. I yeah. have the record right now. I'm in the record book or whatever. I'll just take it for what it is. Yeah. And, like, that was the most we've scored, like, in a game, like, ever, like, in college, right? 44? Yeah, 44, yeah. Yeah. So, like, and not even just against Curry, like, in general. Like, what does your coaching staff do in order for you to get open, like, off the ball? And, like, how do you – how have you learned to create space for yourself to get open? trying to I gotta learn how to answer this question without like giving away too much but, uh, <laughs> um I would say well like, I guess for, well personally for you so you don't want to give anything away with you know coaching wise yeah. and playmaking but like for uh-huh. you how have you developed like over the years like that creativity and that like shiftiness to create space for yourself um I know a lot of teams because like, I don't say I can shoot or whatever uh, yeah. I know a lot of teams kind of they don't even focus on anybody else like when the defender like he literally yeah. just at me the entire game no matter where the ball is. So it's just a matter of like, you know, lateral quickness, things like that, having a good quick first step, because like they're gonna be pressing up on you as soon as you catch the ball. So like having a quick first step, lateral quickness, things like that, like I used to work on. And just off ball screen, like you said, the coaches that they do, like, you know, some off ball screens here and there to help uh, get me open and things like that, to be honest. But like, 
that's all you really can do in a situation that I'm in. Like everybody literally plays me the exact same way. So it's just a matter of staying with it, staying confident and staying like with the plan basically. Like, yeah, I think it was, it was home. I think it was West Con you guys played. You and Cheyenne double, triple teamed the entire game. I think you only had like four points. Cheyenne had like, I don't even know. I can't remember, but you guys literally, we were double teamed the whole entire game. So like in games like that, it must be frustrating. Like, how's that? How's that? How do you feel like during games like that? Oh man, it is frustrating for sure. Yeah. Like, it's literally as soon as you touch the ball, two people are running at you. You're just like, wow, it's crazy. But I mean, again, I, my dad tells me this too all the time. Like, I don't care if we're getting double team, triple team, find a way. So mm. like sometimes I'm not gonna lie, like when I get in games like that, like my mental will be a little, I'm like frustrated. So I kind of like slow down a little bit. I might stand in the corner for a little too long or like not really trying to get to my spots and things like that. I'll get mm -hmm. open. But um but he's been talking to me about that. My dad's been talking to me about that. And I've been changing that. So I don't care. Like, from now on, I have to. I have to find a way. Because, like, like, I, like you said earlier, like, me and Sean are, like, the main scorers right now of the team. So, like, we're going to have to find a way to get make those buckets. Because without the two main scorers right now, the two high scorers of the team. The Little East, to, too. Like, the whole Little East. That's crazy. It's hard to win games like that. So Yeah. But, yeah, now you guys – um. How many you guys are 12 and six now in the season. Um, so to kind of wrap up, like, you know, the basketball questions, uh, what are you guys looking to improve, like, as a whole? And, like, what are you looking to improve, like, for yourself individually, like, uh, as you guys go forward? I would say just start, like, togetherness. Right now we're kind of, like, playing a little selfish or whatever the case is. But, like, mm -hmm. I don't think once we come together again, like we were playing before the uh, break happened, I think we'll be perfectly fine. And as far as, like, individually, I just feel like our mentality going into certain games it has to change, like, Say we're playing a team that we believe that we're better than. Like we might, we might come into the game where it's like, oh, we know we're better than them. So like that's just whatever. You know what I'm saying like kind of mess around a little bit and play with it. Like no, we have to come into every game like ready to just kill whoever's in front of us type thing. So it's like that's how we should be. But, yeah, no, you definitely, you guys will be all like straight. I can't wait to keep watching you guys play. Um, really hoping for a championship, but I know you guys got that for sure. Like you said, just got to keep stay locked in. Um, but I'll see you back on February 9th at the Murray Center. Um, but to kind of like wrap up like the show and everything, like I wanted to ask you about your like your music career because I have been following it a little bit, you know, it's I've been vibing <laughs> with it. Like how how did you get into it and like how did you like start making music and like when did this all happen? Um, so I haven't really I've only been doing music for like I think two years now. Mm -hmm. Like that. I think it's been two years now. Two years would be in March. But um I used to do freestyles, like like little freestyles, whatever, on my Instagram, like back in like 2016 and like whatever the case. And people just also just say like, yo, Key, like just get in the studio, like, you get mm. in the studio. And I'm like, bro, like, I don't like, I don't like music like that. I don't know if I'm gonna like music like that, whatever the case is. Uh -uh. And I felt like this generation, honestly, like we don't listen to lyrical like artists like that for real. Like some of us do obviously, but like, we don't listen to them as much as we do like with the melodic rap and things like that. Yeah, so, right. And I was that lyrical rapper initially. So like, I'm like, bro, no one's gonna listen to this stuff. Like, yeah. Look to my Instagram post, whatever. So then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like writing, I'm writing. I'm like, bro, I'm just gonna make a song, whatever. So I make a song, I go to the studio, I make a song with one of my cousins. And he's actually on the first song I ever made, whatever. I wrote it about somebody. <laughs> I can't say who, but anyway, I wrote it about somebody. And, um, you know, people liked it or whatever. Then I put it on SoundCloud. And, like, I had, like, I think 3,000 or 4,000 streams in, like, a week or something. Something crazy like that. So I'm mm -hmm. like, wait, what? Like, people are actually, like, listening to, like, to me? Like, yeah. weird. So then whatever, I kept going. I kept going with it. And then I kind of started to, like, love it, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. When you go in the studio or if you're in your room writing, I don't write anymore. Like, I freestyle everything now. But, like, you go to the studio, you make a song, and, like, it just come, like the outcome is just, like, dope to you. And, like, even if people don't like it and you like, like, I don't know, that feeling of, like, I did that. Yeah. Like, I love that feeling. So, like, when I go to the studio or whatever, I make a song, I'd be happy. I can't be happy. Yeah. So after college, what do you what do you see yourself pursuing? Like, would you would you see yourself pursuing like a music career or like obviously you, you want to play overseas with basketball? But would you would you see yourself like kind of doing both? I would definitely do both. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go overseas wherever I'm at. Try to find a studio out there and still put out music as much as I can. Make videos as much as I can. Like that basketball is never going. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I would never choose music over basketball. I can't lie. That's never just not a thing. But 
Um, it's actually crazy though, because I've had a few people, I could have had a couple of like kind of big name-ish artists Mm -hmm. on a couple of my songs but obviously money is a huge thing when it comes to like yeah well, those features are like crazy like looking at them and like there was one person i don't want to say who again because i kind of like i feel like when i talk about things they don't happen but there was one person um and it was starting their starting price was like ten thousand or something like that and he was up and coming whatever and like he did his uh, manager was telling me like his prices are going to go up quick you need to let me know now, whatever. And they even dropped it down to like eight thousand. And I'm like, bro, I don't have eight thousand dollars to just yeah. give to somebody. Like that's crazy. So I'm like, all right, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? I waited like a week. By that end of the week, the next week, he was at fifty. I was like, it's over fifty. <laughs> like it's oh, he went up to because he's a big, he's a big like person. Like he's kind yeah. of big. Like again, I, I don't want to say who. But like it's a big name, so like he went up to fifty. I'm like, damn. And then now, to be honest, this happened just yesterday. One of A Boogie's artists, his name's Lil Reek. Um, he made a couple of songs with uh, one of my friends from back home, and um, he played one of my songs for him yesterday. He was he was messing with it. He liked it a lot, so whatever. Yeah. He wants. He said uh, I could tap in with him soon, so hopefully I get that feature too. Uh, it'll be dope though. It'll be dope. Yeah, for sure. I hope like whatever you do, man, just keep pushing the like. I do do both of them at the same time as as much as you can like if like as much as you can push it out like once it comes to like all right I gotta pick one or the other then obviously you gotta make a, a tough decision but like great thing from you Keyshawn like appreciate the time that you've you know had today like I know everything's been so busy but to kind of end off the show my last question I want to ask you uh what did you think would you think of the show and like who would you want to see as like a future guest mm, okay 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 um are you open to like anybody like outside of Rick or just like no bro anybody because I've been talking to like I try to talk to as many athletes as I can like any college athletes obviously I've talked to some like professional coaches and like past players any anybody in like the sports any it could be any sport too not even just basketball um I'll say one of my friends JC he goes to UMass Dartmouth actually he plays on the team there I think the interview him yeah, it'd be a great That'd be a great interview. And as far as the interview goes itself, like the podcast itself, I think it's dope. I yeah. think a lot of it seems like you've been doing this for a long time. Like your questions are like right after, you know. Dude, I've only I've only been doing this two months now. There's been like two it's months. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like you've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm not gonna lie. So it's yeah, dope though. It's I appreciate that, man, so much. Like, um, like I, I started this because I wanted to get my name out there as far as like you know, like the broadcasting stuff, just so people, you know, kind of have a sense of who I am and uh just to kind of get my name you know, publicized because like it's, a, it's at the end of the day, it's who, you know, and it's what connections you can make to get, uh, you know, as far as you can, like you said, with like music, basketball, anything like, it's just, you got to know people and you got to stay on the grind. But uh, again, Keyshawn, that's all the time I got for you today. I appreciate it. Hope you uh, have a good snow day and keep going <laughs> with school. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. I'll see you on the ninth when you guys are at the Murray center. Thank you for having me. No problem. Bro. Anytime.